Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here with Jeff Phillips. He is Senior Product Manager for LabVIEW at National Instruments. Jeff, thanks so much for coming into the studio. We of really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So we are going to talk a little bit about the Brooklyn 5G Summit, a lot of interesting work done there that you were a part of. So if we could start off by talking about the test with, with the Nokia base station. I think that a lot of people heard about that and you were part of that. Yes, absolutely. Nokia Networks is working on a, a 5G research application using the millimeter wave frequencies to prove out the ability to reach extreme bandwidths for 5G. The millimeter wave research is actually pretty interesting from an academic sense because it was only 12 to 18 months ago when most of the research universities and researchers in 5G didn't even consider millimeter wave to be a viable solution. So most of the bandwidth below the 6 gigahertz band is where communication takes place today. And so above that, the frequencies were too exotic. The researchers didn't even think we could do, uh, do bandwidth communication across that spectrum. And now with some of these different research applications, 28 gigahertz, 38 gigahertz, even all the way up to 60 uh, gigahertz, we're starting to see some of these different applications prove out the ability to stream data. Nokia's solution was actually a 73 gigahertz link that did up to 10 gigabits per second of streaming, which is an incredible amount of data to stream at, at such a fast pace. Now let's just interrupt for a minute. 4G is one gigabit per second, right? Yes. So that's, that's the number of magnitude we're talking right. about. Right, and uh, Nokia's solution, their, their actual base station is built off of the PXI platform and using LabVIEW and LabVIEW Communication System Design Suite from NI. Um, and and they're, the really exciting thing about their application is they're, they're pretty much the leader in 5G research right now because they're taking the first actual base station to field testing uh, with NTT Docomo, Docomo. And we're really excited to see some of these technologies start to, to, to come to fruition. And when you look back at 4G and just the pace of innovation within 4G, um, it was a 10 to 15 year span yeah. across time from the seminal concept of Wi-Fi and LTA to when we were actually able to make that a standard. And, and here we are 18 months after kind of the initial concept of millimeter wave was proven out and we're already seeing a field deployment. That's exciting. Now, to be realistic, people do still talk about 2020 as the first year probably for actual 5G deployments, right? Yeah, there, there's a long way to go from the, the testing of a, of a prototype to the commercialized deployment and execution of a base station. But the rate and the pace of change that we've seen in 5G research is, is just a magnitude higher than what we've seen in years past. We still think 2020 is probably the time when we'll see more of a standardized 5G solution hit the market but the, the pace of change and innovation we've seen just in the last 12 months has been incredible. And give us a little bit of information about the solution that you bring to this, that you were using with Nokia and perhaps with some other companies as well. Yeah, so the, the actual design challenge for 5G, uh, when you break it into its parts, what most of the researchers are doing is there's two different teams. And there's a team of the algorithm designers who are typically mathematical experts and they're trying to prove out a new algorithm, a new research algorithm that uh, modulates the data or demodulates the data or packages it up in a, in a way that makes it more efficient to just transmit over the, the frequency spectrums. And they would prove out an algorithm, typically in a tool like MATLAB or in some other math-based software environment, and then they would like literally hand that over the proverbial wall to the design team who would try to implement that into a physical design. And there's just this huge disconnect between those two teams because as you take a theoretical algorithm and put it into practical terms, they were running into all kinds of different challenges. And Nokia actually came to us a few years ago uh, based on LabVIEW, which is a, a broad-based uh, system design platform using a lot of different engineering applications, asking us to work with them on a new design flow inside of that tool. And what we did was we came out with a, a special version of LabVIEW, the LabVIEW Communication System Design Suite that harnessed the, the, the inner workings of LabVIEW and focused it specifically at, at 5G research and doing communications design. So we pulled out a lot of the extra pieces of LabVIEW that were targeted at general embedded design or high production test and really focused the design flows, the IP, the UX inside of that product specifically for communications design. And one of the big facets of LabVIEW communications that makes it so powerful is we actually put in open source IP for both LTE and for Wi-Fi. And this is so critical for designers because they're typically starting from 4G standards in ordering to work up from there. And they'll pick a specific demodulation scheme or a specific component of that algorithm to optimize. 
And having that open source IP gives them the ability to, to start from that. And that's, that's pretty different from how a lot of the other tools in the market are, where you either have a very closed box, closed off 4G IP that lives inside of like a bench top instrument, or you just have very expensive uh, IP that you still can't really get into and optimize. Okay. Now, who are some of the other companies that you're working with on this besides Nokia? Yeah, so Noki is the, the prime leader we have working in the millimeter wave space. Uh, we're doing a, a lot of work with, with other companies and some of the other research vectors of 5G. So when you look at massive MIMO, which is one of the emerging technologies of putting together many different antennas that are highly synchronized over the spectrum of a, of a base station, um, we're working primarily with Loon University, uh, who's done the most advancement in that work. And it was last year that Loon actually had the first a uh, working 100 antenna massive MIMO system. And to, to synchronize 100 different antennas across uh, an FPGA technology that, that does signal handing off between the, the different source signals uh, it was an in incredible feat to see them. And uh, they were able to actually publish, they published a paper at Globecom okay. here in Austin in December on the research findings. And then over on the, the, the new waveform uh, side of research, we've been working very heavily with uh, TU Dresden and Dr. Gerhard Fettweiss. Um, and they've been researching a new type of demodulation scheme called GFDM, which is basically a way to take more data and embed it in a traditional LTE signal and use that LTE signal as a carrier. And what they're proving out is they can actually pack more data in without disturbing the actual LTE signal. So one of the, the, the big known weaknesses of LTE is that it, it, there's a lot of unused spectrum because of the, the large roll-offs at each of the different edge points. And so they're looking at actually nulling out some of those points, inserting more uh, data on top of it using GFDM, which is a different modulation scheme, and sending that across the signal. And uh, TU Dresden has a, a functional prototype where they're streaming 720p live HD data uh, with carrier GFDM signal on top of it without actually uh, sacrificing the integrity of the, the carrier signal itself. Now, would this be considered part of 5G or part of LTEA? No, so the, each of those three are, are the three, um, are three of the four big vectors of 5G research. When you look at what most researchers actually think 5G is going to become, it's going to be some combination of using a massive MIMO system in millimeter wave bandwidths or doing GFDM type of demodulation on a massive MIMO system. There are lots of independent research teams looking down each path. If you take Nokia Networks, for example, they have teams looking at each of the independent vectors. Even at Brooklyn 5G, uh, Nokia demonstrated a, a beam forming uh, massive MIMO solution where they can actually take these smaller signals and shape them around corners to get better coverage. Um, when you look at the different companies we're working with, one of the advantages that our platform brings them is the flexibility of LabVIEW and the PXI form factor. Because when these independent research teams need to take a massive MIMO solution or a, uh, a GFDM solution and bring them together, they're going to be built on the same platform, sharing the same source IP. And so bringing those different solutions together and integrating them will be far easier than if they were built in independent software environments that don't communicate with each other and don't share IP. Right. Now, once you get into these higher frequencies, is, is carrier aggregation less of an issue? Can you often just have single carrier uplink and downlink, or what do you see? Yeah, I mean, that, that really depends on, on the type of application or the integrity of the signal that you need, that you need to, to publish back and forth. The fourth vector um, that we didn't talk about was small cell research or densification yeah. um, of having many different, um, many different signals or base station carriers within one field. Um, and there's a lot of interesting research happening in those fields um, you know, as well. And like I said, the actual end solution will, be, will end up being some combination um, of the four.